Hi, this is Ellie Fishman, and welcome to our latest vodcast. And this is another talk I gave at ISCT looking at the role of app development in CT training. And in this talk, what I looked at is some of the things we've discussed before, which relate to how we do education and how things are changing. And if you look backwards, uh, how is radiology? We had textbook, we had case files typically on film, or maybe you had some slides, the classic uh, envelopes, AFIP, or your own teaching files. We looked at VHS tapes. Then CDs came along, which were a major advance. And of course, those things are all non-existent anymore. Has anyone seen a slide carousel over the past decade or so? And now everything in some sense is computer-based. And whether it's desktop or laptop or on your iPhone, everything is somehow computer-based. And if you look at the stuff we're doing, and I'll focus on the stuff we did, we do web-based educational. We do CTSS, right? That's where you're looking. That has massive amount of material from images to text to lectures. We do social media, particularly Facebook, getting you lots of information both inside and outside of radiology. And we develop apps in the App Store. Now, when you think about training, you could look at it from two perspectives as well. One from the teacher's perspective and one from the student's perspective. And probably, in some sense, they overlap, but in some sense, they're very different. And what we'll do is we'll focus it more from the perspective of the teacher. So some of the truths, regardless of the media or the delivery mode, content is king. If you don't have good content, no matter how fancy your interface or anything else you do, it's just not going to happen. Is that user interface and the user experience, which are critical in attracting and retaining users. People like the information given to them in a way they feel comfortable. Users also constantly want new material and more material to keep them interested in a website or an app. If things are stagnant, if you're always showing the same cases or the same lectures, people will look elsewhere for other material. And then, fortunately or unfortunately, people want to pay as little as possible which usually means zero. And one of the challenges on the web, if you are trying to make money, and we've never tried, uh, is that how do you charge? You know, because people expect things for free. Now, the cost of making things is never for free, as we all know, but people just seem not to want to pay for it. So what's our path? Well, we've been doing the website CTSS for about 16 years, and that really is sort of the home to everything else we do is where our massive content is. It's where we learn a lot what people want to do and really use that as sort of a jumping point to everything else we've done and everything else we're going to do. So we have things like lectures and we have, you know, teaching files, hundreds of thousands of cases that get millions and millions of views. We have tremendous content from case of the month or quiz of the month to case of the day to journal club medical illustrations, on and on. And we're constantly changing and adding to this material. Very straightforward. And then also, we do change. So we have this new interface, just a little bit more than a month old. Again, changing things up a bit, making it a bit easier for people to find the information. And our interface to you, our our window to you, really is this whole, uh, the whole program. So. You can see it's a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer, and a little bit easier to get through the information. Here's the bottom half of that screen. So again, the ability for people to get where they want to go and also to know what information you had or have is always a challenge. We've always um, had lots of information, but sometimes it was hard even for me who wrote the information to simply find. And then, of course, we go to the iTunes and uh, we have 10 apps on the App Store. Five of them are also not only on iPad, but they're on iPhone. We change these or update these typically every three to six months for most of the apps. And then we create new ones like this pancreatic checklist. So we look at what people want, and there's a checklist you can work through how we evaluate a suspected mass, for example. Really good, the classic checklist. We're doing this for other things. Our next one will be the adrenal. And then Pam Johnson worked on this critical measurements. Every measurement you could think of in CT from head to toe really well done wonderful interface and then our lectures you know we put up a lecture every week many of you listen to that and then we put this ctss lecture series where all of our lectures are divided by topic and it's easy to go into them find the specific pancreas lecture or spleen lecture 
And again, this is updated every six months. And there's about 700 lectures in there, and that's growing at about 52 lectures a year. We also recognize th devices drive what we do. iPad. Number of articles talking about the iPad in radiology resident education. We talk about this article by Berkowitz. Majority of residents at the author's institution have incorporated the iPad as an educational tool and as a learning aid. Incorporation of the iPad into clinical workflow has been less pronounced, but it's moving in that direction. Or this article by Sharpie talking about their radiology resident toolbox. Again, working on things including the ABR format for exams. This pre-confined tablet fully embraces the technology shift into mobile computing and represents a paradigm shift in education strategy. So again, everybody is looking at ways of delivering information. And also, in this era of new learners, you need to be able to change how you deliver the information since people are different. Many of you also know that we have Facebook and Twitter. Now, I like Facebook. Our stuff from Facebook goes on Twitter. Uh, you can see it right on the left-hand screen. And we put up lots of content, content related to case of the day, pearl of the day, lots of information and imaging, but also a lot of things that go beyond just simple imaging. And we now have 100,000 likes, which means we're 25% more than the ACR or the RSNA. And we thank all our users for helping us get those numbers. We have a million plus people who follow us. And so you might see something like this, a serous cyst adenoma of the pancreas or this aortic dissection with motion. And you can see within a few hours, 27,000 people were reached. Or our pearl of the day, which is typically a quote from an article or a differential diagnosis or some sort of list or information from some of our illustrations. So again, content is both radiology and non-radiology. It's in part random, you could say. But the reality is, is when I say random is, we try to have the user not quite know what's coming next. There's certain things that are guaranteed, the case of the day, the pearl of the day, the song of the week, but other information from TED Talks to this article by Blumberg talking about cancer research to Julie Dreyfus on SNL to Eric Clapton, our good friend. So when you think about it, what we're trying on Facebook is to use what Facebook is, a medium and trying to take it from a social medium to making education a social process as well. So again, there's no one right answer, but we're trying to look at what works. And you can see the numbers, over 1.1 million users in that 28-day period. And it's impressive that you could have 300,000 people looking at your site every single day. And it's also interesting, and I've said this before, that people where are they coming from is worldwide. Only about a quarter of our Facebook users, for example, are from the US, which is typical Facebook numbers. Look at this, the countries, India, Pakistan, Egypt, Brazil, Mexico, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, and the like, and the cities, from Cairo to Baghdad to Riyadh to New Delhi. And again, very, very impressive numbers. And numbers to me, I like numbers because it gives us an idea if we're doing things right or we're doing things wrong. So the fact that we can help educate the world, we take great pride in that. And I mentioned about posts. Here's one of our runoff studies, 377,000 people, 38,000 views that first 24 hours. I mean, it's just very impressive numbers. You give a lecture, you're lecturing to a conference of 100 people, you're wonderful. We're lecturing to 377,000 people. And if you wanna know, can small groups like us or you make a difference. This is an older slide, but it shows that we had 83,000 likes and the ACR had 72,000 and RSNA 67,000. Now we're at 100,000. So you can constantly change, develop, and indeed grow. And in fact, here's just the next slide, two months apart, but I promise you from the time I gave this talk till now, which is about a month, we added about 10,000 new likes. Now, we have written about this, a great article, uh, Carolina and Madison wrote about uh, medical delivery of information using Facebook. So there is a lot of ways you can use Facebook in education. And again, it's this idea of connecting to our users, connecting to you, and really trying to drive what needs to be done. Uh, Facebook has been embraced by medical professionals. 
And in our experience, it is a great medium. Now, the one thing we know to quote Bob Dylan, the times are changing. There's no doubt how you deliver information, how you can deliver information. What you should do is changing. It's kind of like that Don Henley, which was one of our favorites at CTSS, him and the Eagles. The more I know, the less I understand. All the things I thought I figured out, I have to learn again. I've been trying to get down to the heart of the matter, but everything changes. And I think in education, everything is changing. Everything will continue to change. It's very exciting. The key is to try to figure out what the best way of doing things are. And I will tell you, there's no perfect answer, and the answer today will not be the answer tomorrow. So I can speak for us at CT is us, that we are constantly looking at ways of doing things differently. If you have any ideas, suggestions, come speak to us. But we are looking, changing, and moving forward. And with that, have a great day.